Hey guys, I just want to take you through some pretty cool stuff that we got uh, to do with some of our coaches this week um, with our Pinoe device. So the Pinoe device is a metabolic testing unit. Um, you've all seen the athletes doing things with the mask over their face. The Pinoe essentially measures the amount of oxygen you're taking into your uh, system and using and the amount of carbon dioxide that you're exhaling. Um, so we do a ramp test. You can do this in a number of different ways. We did our uh, ramp testing so far with uh, an assault bike. So essentially there's a, a formula um, to figure out where someone's ranges or parameters are. And then we start and finish the ramp test based on those parameters. Um, the misconception I think with the, the ramp test and the Pinoe test is that you have to go until absolute failure. Um, that will happen, but that's not necessarily the goal of the test. Um, the goal of the test really is to find out where we burn fat and where we metabolize carbohydrate and where the clear differentiation is between the two. If we know what that differentiation is, then we can clearly, clearly, clearly set someone's heart rate zones. We can tell them exactly how much fat they're metabolizing at different intensities. And we can use that to not only dial in their nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis, but also if they do running or biking or competing in CrossFit, we can dial in their in-event um, nutrition so that their performance improves. There's tons and tons of awesome stuff that you can do with this unit. So I'm going to show you some data today from one of our coaches, Sally, who's agreed to share this with us. Um, Sally's data is really clear um, and it shows us um, some really cool stuff. So I'll take you through what we found out and how we're going to apply that to Sally's training. Bit of a background, Sally went through one of these six week um, trial groups that I've asked a lot of our clients to do um, and had, have had some amazing buy-in. Sally did what she needed to do. She came in as a really, really good um, she's got some good endurance potential. She's also got um, a very good top end as well. So she does well in, in CrossFit style workouts, um, but she came in as a really good athlete. So I was excited to test her to see what happened. What we did with these uh, trial groups is we asked them to use the Maffetone formula to calculate max heart rate. So the Maffetone formula essentially was, is 180 beats per minute minus your age and then divided by 0.7. And that gives us a max heart rate. We plug that into a program called self loops that we use to track heart rate in the gym. And Sally did the last six weeks based on those heart rate zones. Because of her training background, we knew going in that that formula was going to put her low. Uh, and we kept her there for a couple of different reasons. The main reason is for most people, fat burning isn't going to happen at the top end of zone two. Okay. If we're punching out that ceiling of zone two, chances are our fat burn potential isn't quite as high as it is at the lower ends of zone two. And obviously individual uh, results will vary there, but that's what we've seen um, through a lot of the testing that we've uh, reviewed and certainly the testing that we've done in the gym. So Sally um, really bit the bullet and, and went easier than she was used to doing, which um, you know, was a great example for a lot of our, our athletes in the gym. So, um, what we want to look at today is how does Sally's testing influence what her heart rate zones are going to be going forward and what other information we can get from that. So really quickly, we're going to look at her max VO2. So Sally's in her late forties. Um, her max VO2 here is 46, um, mil per minute per kilogram, which for uh, a female her age, that's fantastic. It's a nice high number. And we know that, um, you know, she's an excellent athlete. So if we didn't see a high number there, then we might want to start looking for reasons why. Uh, it might be recent illness, it might be injury, it might be something else that we haven't even considered yet. So we just kind of want to have a look at that number. We want to celebrate it if it's good. But in reality, we can't do a lot of manipulation of training based on that number. We can certainly measure the impact of training based on that number. And we can also let Sally know that having a high max VO2 and certainly improving that max VO2 even a couple of points is going to drastically improve her chances of longevity. So her chances of dying from a cardiovascular disease uh, or event is going to be drastically reduced because she has a great max VO2. She can use oxygen really, really well. And as we all know, oxygen is pretty important to living. Um, so max VO2 is going to be that number that we show everybody right away because that's what they're interested in. Um, but the real stuff that we want to get out of this testing lies in the graph that I'm going to show you here. So initially what happens when you get this graph after testing is it looks like a bit of a jumbled mess. 
guys. So there's not much I would be able to, to take out of that. It looks like there was a struggle. <laughs> and that's basically what we can take out of that line graph. Um, but if we spread it out, like I had it when I brought up this screen, um, we get to see things a little bit more clearly. Okay, so all I did here is just to spread out the um, average breaths, you can spread out the average time. Um, now we see two very clear lines. And those two lines are red and they're blue. The blue line means that this is the amount of oxygen during testing that Sally took in. Um, and the red line is a very clear indication of how much CO2 she expired. So what we wanna see, and we can see this on a cell phone for the app, even when the testing is happening, is that there's gonna be a very clear differentiation between these two lines. There's a very clear space here, it's nice and big. And that means that Sally is very effectively utilizing fat as a fuel source, okay? As that intensity, and a lot of us are good at doing that at a really low intensity, especially through the warm-up phase and possibly into the lower phase of activity. A lot of us are really good at doing that at a low intensity. Um, Sally has a great fat burning engine, as we can see, as it continues to have that big gap as we go further up the graph. What we see here is that la that line gets very, very close together. And at this point right here, it crosses over. Now, if all I was doing was watching Sally's lines while she rode the bike on Friday, I would know exactly when things started to hit the fan. So, because a lot of times what will happen when those two lines intersect, it means that we're working hard enough that we are switching over from fat metabolism or even a little bit of fat metabolism to almost completely carb utilization. Okay. And that's where this happens for Sally. So if we pinpoint that spot on this graph, all we need to do is zoom down here to the bottom. So two graphs down, we're going to see her heart rate. So heart rate escalated nice and smoothly. Okay. She, there was no real, um, spots in there where she needed to try and keep up or, um, you know, there was no ups and downs. It's a very clear straight line. But what we want to do is look at that intersection here. And what we can see is that 167 beats per minute is the point at which Sally completely crossed over from fat utilization to carb utilization. So what we can do at a real simple level is we can enter that number 167 in as her lactate threshold. So it's the delineation between zone four and zone five. Uh, and then what we would do from there is do a calculation downward to say, these are what her new zones are. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of formulas and things like that you can plug these numbers into that'll do it for you. But if you just go based on your percentages of zones, um, then we can really easily do that and we can adjust her zones. So I'm gonna show you something crazy here. Like I said, Sally trusted us early on. So she did her initial zones for this trial based on that Maffetone formula, the 180 minus your age divided by 0 0.70. And these were her numbers. So her zone one was up to 106 beats per minute. In testing, she's coming in at 132. So we immediately are taking the leash off Sally and she's going to get a lot more uh, room in each of those training zones. Obviously this is very individual in terms of results. There are some people who are not as well conditioned who won't get this immediate, um, you know, <laughs> longer leash in terms of training, especially in those lower zones, zone one, zone two. Um, but this is what Sally's results showed us. So we may have somebody who comes in who's not as well conditioned or has come off illness or injury whose zones may actually come in lower than what that formula predicted. And that's why this is the gold standard. It's because it tells us exactly where that person is in terms of capability to metabolize fat and carbohydrate at that one time. So retesting every six, eight weeks is certainly important because we want to make sure we know what our training program has done for us. And we want to make sure our training program is doing the things that we say it's going to do. So this testing can definitely do that, but it's going to line things up perfectly. So that person has very little room for error if they follow the training plan in order to stay in those zones that are tailor-made for them. So zone two, we've been spending a lot of time in our gym at zone two. I think a lot of multimodal uh, interval training or um, you know any sort of uh, hit type workouts, people are gonna be not as great usually at doing zone two work, uh, especially if there is any sort of complexity to the movement. And so what we wanted to do with our athletes is really get them better at working in zone two. And initially in this, you know, these six week trials we've been running, 
the initial couple of weeks of working in zone two have been exceptionally hard for those athletes. They've gotten better at doing that because they've been working at that intensity and the results have exponentially gone up and they've gotten better at working at that capacity. Let's look at Sally's real quick here. So her old zone two was from 107 beats per minute to 124 beats per minute. Because of testing, she gets to bump that up a little bit. She's now at 133 to 153. So basically the governor has been taken off for quite a bit. And now her zone two work is actually gonna get pretty sweaty. So when we think of zone two, we tend to think of it as boring. We tend to think of it as steady state. Uh, and in reality, it should be fairly steady state, but we tend to think of it as, as something that just isn't going to break a sweat. For someone with a good capacity in zone two, it's actually gonna mean that that's probably pretty close to what a normal run, bike ride, um, you know, workout that isn't in insane would, would put us at. So uh, when she adjusts training here today, it's gonna to feel a little bit more um, natural. It's certainly gonna become a little bit more sweaty um, because she has, we've outlined her zones based on what her current capacity is. So that's just an overview of some of the things um, the Panoe testing can do for us. Um, we will film some more stuff on how to use the Panoe. We'll certainly film some more stuff on how to interpret the reports. Um, Sally's detailed report should be coming from Panoe today or tomorrow. So we'll film another short uh, video to take you through what that um, report process looks like and how you can use that to explain these results to your clients. Um, but I wanted to show you what we show you today because this is a nice way right after the test is done, this data is available uh, on the screen. There's a lot of different ways that we can manipulate it to show different things. But essentially, as soon as Sally cooled down on Friday, we were able to pull up this data and say to her, listen, here's where your new zones are at. Here's where um, your max VO2 is at. And here's what we're going to do with it to change your training. Uh, instead of waiting a couple of days for that report, we can give her an initial prescription and then recycle back to her once that report comes in and look for any you know, holes that need to be filled in or other information that's going to help her to understand where she's at right now and what her training plan is going to look like. All right, very, very exciting stuff. Um, this Pinoe uh, unit has a lot of different capabilities that we can do with it. And I think we'll uh, continue to uncover um, some ways that we can use that, but it does really provide a dialed in prescription for your clients.